Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Can our hoarders bear to part with their possessions? I want to keep that. It's priceless. And reclaim their homes for good. Why isn't it on your mantelpiece? This is the thing. Today, they're helping a couple clear out their home, which is full of vinyl records and useful items that they never use. Why have we got these doors? What are they doing? After years of hoarding, are they really ready to let go? 30 years of collecting things. <laughs> That'll be useful one day. But how will you ever know where to find anything? And a collector whose habits have got so out of hand, her two-bedroom bungalow has been taken over. I have clothes falling out the wardrobes. I've got 37 stamp albums. There is a soda fountain in the bathroom. And all this clutter gives our experts a bit of a problem. Wow, is there any room for us to actually get in the bedroom? <laughs> Later, our SOS team will head to Cambridgeshire to help retired costume designer Michelle part with just a few of her collections. This house is a bungalow with enough stuff in it for a mansion. But first, in Sheffield, meet NHS manager and keen gardener Jackie in her oasis of calm and tranquility. And here's insurance manager husband Don, in the study with his enormous collection of records. Got several of these, but about four or five of these. Flip side to that's quite a desirable record. Do, do, do. The other place of chaos is the garage. I mean, this is what gets me down. Just look at the state of this. Where do you begin? With the doors? We're a bit green in our outlook, in the sense that rather than just throw things in the skip, we'd rather compost it, recycle yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. But best laid plans and all that? We've just built stuff on the thing. This will come in handy later. And later's arrived and we've still got it. <laughs> this couple needs help. Time to bring in our two experts. Don and Jackie. That's it. Curtis has been valuing antiques for over 25 years. He's here to help Don and Jackie find things to sell. While Marianne runs a holiday let business and knows all about keeping things tidy. Hi. Hi. Hello. Nice to Come meet you. on in. Nice to meet you. Jackie needs to head off, so Don is holding the fort today. Well. Um, Where's the stuff? I'll take you upstairs. Right, following you. While Marianne checks out the garage, Don reveals a few bits he's dug out to sell, most related to his passion for music. Right, Curtis, we've got a few bits that uh, I'm thinking about getting rid of. Mm -hmm. This was one of them. It's a direct drive turntable. Mm. The tone arm's broken and I can't be bothered to uh, okay. replace it. How much to replace? I don't know, 60 quid or something, but oh, okay. the weight of it, it's real solid. Yeah. So you could have that playing somewhere and somebody's bouncing around, dancing, and yeah. you know, you'll, as long as it's firmly set, it won't, you won't, the records won't jump and things. When did you buy it? Oh, uh, did I buy it or did I have it given me? Oh, lucky you. I think I had it given me. Blimey, so this is going to be all profit? Yeah. Oh, well, that's good news, isn't it? Yeah. OK, well... Let's say the six, seven hundred pound new. Mm. I would imagine maybe a hundred pounds. Does that make sense to you? I would have thought so, yeah. Right, so that's one thing for me to take away. A good start for Curtis, but Marianne is struggling. Right, we're here in this garage, which there is no floor space in which to stand. <laughs> There's a little bit of organisation on going on there with the shelves. What on earth is under here is just beyond me. Gardening stuff, material. But you, how would you ever find anything? Oh, OK. 
cables. They might be something to do with the speakers, being that there are some large speakers here, so perhaps Don's a bit of a DJ in his time. Spot on. Upstairs, DJ Don might be about to be persuaded to wave goodbye to part of his extensive record collection. Well, this is fascinating. Obviously, sadly, um, we lost uh, David Bowie recently. Mm. Um, and I was an avid fan, still am. Uh, but this is a, an item that I think I got for my birthday. How long ago? Oh, 25, 27 years ago. It's like an album of singles yeah. of all these big hits. And they're all double-sided picture discs. Never played? Never played. Mint. Um, Who bought you this? My mum. She got one for me and one for my brother. So right. there's another one in existence in our family. It's very difficult to look at something you've never seen before and put yeah. a price on it. What would you like to get for it? I, I, I wouldn't want it to go for less than £100. Yeah, I think, that, yeah, I think that's fair, because individually... There's about 15 singles in there. Let's say 100 is our bottom Minimum. line. Absolute mm. bottom line. Some vinyl records were produced with an added extra, such as a picture sleeve or a poster, which makes the item more valuable and collectible. I've got something else. An original Beatles. Magical Mystery Tour 1967 book. I've only ever seen one of these before. And that's in mint condition. It is. Well, record. someone's loved this, haven't they? Yeah. Th uh, this I like. What do you think? I've got a figure in my head, but I, I, I want to know what you think as well. I, I ain't got a clue. I ain't got a clue. OK, well, I should, I should be bold. 50 quid. Yeah, do you know what? I, I was going to say, I was going to be really bold and say 40 to 50 pounds, mm. I'd be happy selling that for to give back to you. Cos I think that's a pretty sensible collector's Ooh. item. OK, so that's coming away with me too. Oh. Vinyl is coming back, and that could be good news for Don selling some of his items. He's got the record player, he's got the David Bowie picture discs. Let's just hope they bring in the sort of money that, to be honest, we need to be able to deliver them back a nice cheque. In the garage, Marianne is starting to see the wood for the trees. Uh, if I turn around here, see, see, that's like your average garage. It's organised, things on the shelf. Everybody has a fridge also in the um, garage. A lot of it's rubbish. Well, with my help, Don can tell me what he wants to keep, what he doesn't want to keep, and we can get on with it. Great. In the meantime, Don has one more item to show Curtis. OK. Nick on there coming back, cameras, uh, analogue cameras. You bought this mil. back in the 80s, I assume? Yeah. Keen photographer as well mm. as a DJ? Yeah. What did you pay for this back in the 80s? 300, 300 pounds or so springs to mind, okay. I think. Yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it? People are collecting cameras again, but they're really specific about what they collect. Bit of damage going on there by the looks yeah, of it. Yeah, it's the catch. The catch is bust, so you have to tape it on. Right, OK. I've seen quite a lot of cameras go through auction recently, yeah. and they are surprisingly low in value. Right. I still think it's a niche market, so whatever we can get for it... 20 quid for it or something or whatever. Yeah, I don't want to set your expectations high, but if we could get 20, 30 pounds for this, would you be happy? Yeah, I would. So Curtis has gathered an armful of music-related items from Don and Jackie, along with the camera, and now he's ready to hot-foot it off to sell it for as much as he can get. The garage? The only thing I see is it's just all on the floor, so there is no floor space, but it won't actually take much to tidy that up. I've got a bit of a job on my hands. Those David Bowie singles might surprise us. So on that thought... Shall we? I'm going to go and sort it out. And I'm going to try and sell something. Marianne is staying behind to start Don off on sorting that garage. Curtis has tracked down an online buyer for Don's turntable and is meeting up in South London. They want to pay about 70, 80 quid. Now, these things need work, so to me, that seems like a fair price. I'm waiting for him now. Let's hope he turns up. There we are, sir. Oh, marvellous stuff. Thank you very much. There's your hard-earned money. Well. Lovely. Pleasure. Thank you, my friend. Don and Jackie weren't the only ones to send out a hoarder SOS to our experts. Meet Michelle. She's a retired costume designer living in this two-bedroom bungalow with her son and hundreds upon hundreds of ornaments and perfume bottles. This house 
is a bungalow with enough stuff in it for a mansion. But it's not just the perfume bottles that are taking up space. She's an enthusiastic collector. I tend to go a bit overboard. I've got 37 stamp albums, 1,000 CDs, hundreds of records. I have clothes falling out the wardrobes, hundreds and hundreds of books. This is my mermaid. She is a brandy bottle. Dare we ask if there is any more? There is a soda fountain in the bathroom. Well, of course there is. I really need help sorting things out, selling things on, because if left to me, I will just say, oh, no, I'll, I'll just put that away for another day. Here we are, sunny Cambridgeshire. Thankfully, help is en route. Curtis is here, along with Joanna, owner of a cleaning company and a whiz at decluttering. Good morning. Come in. Come on, you. Where are you leading us, Michelle? Into my bedroom, which, as you can see, is full. Wow, is there any room for us to actually get <laughs> in the bedroom? Just about. There's Come on, stuff <laughs> everywhere in here. What's in all these boxes and all these cupboards? Uh, <laughs> mainly clothes. Uh, where's all the stuff I can look at? Go and have a look in the living room. You'll find all sorts of goodies in there. Ooh, intriguing. Well, she likes her perfume bottles, that's for sure. Some novelty ones. No real value, though. Now, that's nice. Made in Germany and got some age to it as well. Beautifully made, very old glass. That's got to have a bit of value to it. It's probably the most expensive one in the collection. Maybe I'll go and speak to Michelle about this. Let's hope Michelle's not too attached to that particular one. I wanted to talk about this one. Oh, yeah, Your my favourite. Ah, OK. Oh, dear. If I did take it away, what would... And you said, yeah, you can sell it, what would be the bottom line? I'd probably say you can't take it, to be honest. Right, OK, so this one's going back in the cabinet. Yes. Surely there's a gem amongst this lot. I think what I want to do, then, is just take away a couple of the ones that I think may get us a few pounds. Yeah. The ones that I consider to be yes. decorative. Yeah. Because I think the market, if there is a market broader than a collector, yeah. it's going to be someone that buys a perfume bottle because they say, oh, that's quite pretty. Yeah. I'll never use it, yeah. but that can go on my bedside table. Like this one, for instance. This isn't a huge value, but I just think it's something that's fun and has the ability to sell. It's very pretty. Is this one you're happy to part with? Yeah. Right, OK, so that's good news. Progress at last. And Curtis isn't stopping there. If you don't mind, I'm going to have a route around and see if I can find a few more that are similar... Yeah. ..that I can take away as well, cos I okay. do want to bring you back some money. Michelle is a true collector in every sense of the word. There are perfume bottles everywhere in that house. Now, I thought I was going to find some real gems, and there is the one. But it's not one she wants to get rid of. So I've got to find something to take away to sell that's perfume bottles to make her a few quid. Coming up, Joanna has her work cut out when starting to declutter. How many of these do you wear, if you're brutally honest? About 99%. And Marianne gets stuck into that garage with Don. How did it get like this? It's organised chaos. In Sheffield, couple Don and Jackie are trying to declutter so their house matches the immaculate garden. Oh, this lot really does my head in. And in Cambridgeshire, uh, collectibles expert Curtis is trying really hard to persuade Michelle to part with some of her collections. If I did take it away, what would be the bottom line? I'd probably say you can't take it. While Queen of Clean Joanna is struggling in Michelle's bulging bedroom. It's a hazard. And I think, if I'm honest, she's given up. It's a mammoth task for her to get this to a decent state. Lucky you're here, then. Curtis and Michelle have identified some computer games belonging to Michelle's son, Vincent, as potential sale items. Now, I'm right at my comfort zone here, Michelle, cos I know more about potholing than I know about computer games. Educate me. I know about the same as you. OK. Um, they're PC games and Xbox games. And are these yours? No, they're my son's, but he, he said I could sell them. 
what have we got here? We've got, looks to me, about 20 PC games here. Yeah, so 20 PC games and about 20 Xbox games. OK, and what's happened to the consoles that you play these games on? They're here somewhere. So can we take them away and sell them as well? Yes, you may. Good. Now, I know if you took them into a shop in the high street, they're going to offer you 50 pence a pound each. Mm -hmm. So if we've got 40 games in total, that's between 20 and 40 pounds just sitting here right now. Yeah. Wonderful. And the consoles as well, I don't know what they're going for. I don't. But I can imagine there's still a few good pounds in games consoles mm -hmm. as long as they work. Yes, they do. And with your permission, if I can take them away as well, yep. then I think I should be coming back with a cheque that you might be happy with. Jolly good. Right. One more thing to take away and a bit less clutter in your house. Yep. Brill. Game on. While Curtis has found some collectibles, Joanna is busy battling with Michelle in the bedroom. Wow. Dress heaven. Her plan is to start with Michelle's wardrobe to see if anything can be cleared or given to charity. So this goes without saying, doesn't it? This yeah. one is for clothes. Charity, clothes. And it's great because you put them at your front door and they'll pick them up. Let's fill this bag up first. Mm. Do you want me to help? Well, we've got to get there first. Yeah, we have. Most of these clothes, this side, I wear all the time. OK. I warn you, I'm very partial to my clothes. Uh-oh. But there is a reason behind Michelle's love of clothes. I used to work for a television company and I worked in the uh, casting department originally and then transferred to the wardrobe department. I then went into my own business, making clothes for other people, designing clothes. As a consequence, I have clothes falling out the wardrobes. Collecting things is my comfort zone. So letting go of things is not really that comfortable for me. Some gentle persuasion might be the way forward here. Once we've decided what we can get rid of and what you can sell, earn some cash, mm -hmm. you'll have a bed your bedroom back in no time. Jolly good. That's uh, pretty. It is very pretty. I think I've worn it once. Well done, Joanna. The charity bag yeah. has come up good. This is a beautiful dress. Happy for me to go and have a look in the other room? Yes. Phew. Meanwhile, Curtis has found something else he's keen to try and sell. I found this soda siphon to sell. I've never sold one of these before. Maybe I'll put a bit of fizz into her life if I do. It's coming with me. With that, Curtis has scooped up a curious range of Michelle's collectibles to cash in. The soda siphon, several computer games and consoles, along with some of Michelle's perfume bottles. Now it's time to head off to make her some decent cash for clutter. How are you getting on? This lady is a real collector, and as exciting as that is, it's causing me a real problem. How about you? I've got the same issue. She loves to collect things. She's got so much clutter. She's beyond tidying. Well, do you know what? I am going to take some stuff out of this house, and I am going to sell it. And if I can come back with some cash, I might change her mind. We all like a bit of cash. Oh, we love a bit of cash. Joanna stays behind to help Michelle clear out. And Curtis has taken Michelle's soda siphon to an antique dealer in Rutland. It turns out dealer Mark knows a thing or two about this elegant piece. Manufacturer based in London. Mm. I think it was round about 1881. Yep. Went until the early 1930s, so that was their period of, okay. of manufacture. Uh, the Victorian-style hand-blown glass, mm. this is characteristic of that period. So. This, this is too hard to reproduce. You could not fake this. Oh, crikey, it'd be too so expensive, it's, wouldn't it? It's just, yeah, it's not, it's not feasible. What's your first thought? My first thought, can I just show you one that I've got? Is that all right? You, sh of course you can. Similar style. Yes, that's quite a nice looking thing. But this is a later one. It is. This one I've got out for 30 pounds. So this one here, I'd bid you 40 pounds for. Forty pounds, eh? <clears throat> I'd like a smidgen more. I have to say, a smidgen more would make me very happy. OK. How about 45? 45 pounds? Happy with that. So now you're the proud owner of two soda siphons. 
but hopefully you won't own this one for long. In Sheffield, Marianne has been surveying the clutter in Don and Jackie's garage. Now she's come up with a plan. Time to wheel in Don. Don, how did it get like this? 30 years of uh, collecting things, <laughs> you know. That'll be, that'll be useful one day. But how will you ever know where to find anything? It's organised chaos. <laughs> Eventually I find something. <laughs> yes. I've never had a car in it. I can see clearly, I can see you never get a car in. How does it make you feel when you see this? A bit stifled, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly surprising, but Marianne is itching to get started with the garage clear out, to get those shelves sorted and reclaim that floor space. Let's get this box full and then we can see that shelf going to be cleared. Right. Well, what, we rummaged all these, haven't we? Or... Yeah, we just put them all in. Right, I think that's a good start then, Don. Fold that lid over for me. Right. Grab the door yeah, and we're I'll off. Get that. You sure? Yeah. I'll get the door. Okay. And once they've made a start in the garage, there's no stopping them. We can get rid of this. Yeah. This... Old game that can go. That's an old router that I don't need anymore. Okay. That's junk. What have you got there? I don't know. These old jeans and chuck them on. Monitor don't work. Well, give me that then. Hold it up. Oh, that's going to be a bit heavy for you. Don't, don't you worry about that. Just shove it on. That's it. Right. So... If you think about it, that's just taken a very short space of time. I'll probably do it in a day. Yeah, easy. I bet you. Easy. Well, you need to get a move on, as there's still piles of stuff to clear. Don's up and running, so Marianne can leave him and Jackie to it. Still to come, Joanna tackles Michelle's collections. Got little glass ramekins. Will you use them again? Probably not. And in Sheffield, Don and Jackie are making a breakthrough. Hey, I can see a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Look at it, it's looking amazing already. In Cambridgeshire, Joanna is helping retired costume designer Michelle part with some of her precious clothes. That's pretty. It is very pretty. I think I've worn it once. And back in Sheffield, DJ Don is embracing Marianne's advice. We can get rid of this. Yeah, old game, that can go. That's an old router that I don't need anymore. OK. That's junk. Oh, no. He's made a dent in both the garage and the study, but there's still a whole lot more to clear. Curtis is in London, seeking out a buyer for Don's Bowie and Beatles singles collections. Now, Michael, the guy that owns this can't tell me anything about his history other than his mum bought it for him for a birthday present. David Bowie's gone. Where does it sit in the big scheme of things now? Uh, yeah, it's gone up quite a bit. Um, it's peaked. It's not as much as it was. So the guy selling it wants about £100 for it. I have to say he's right on the selling price, but that's him... But that's retail. It. That's retail. That's a retail, retail price. price. Yeah, him selling it privately. He could possibly achieve that. OK, so down to brass tacks, you're looking at giving me £50 for it. Yeah, that's what I would be looking at, realistically. Then I guess it's going to have to go back to him. OK. No sale means Curtis is under pressure. Let's hope Michael is more interested in the Fab Four. It is a nice thing. Two discs, lyrics, all the pictures from the films and other and sort yeah. of cartoons as well. Yeah, no, it's a lovely item. And good condition. Good condition, yeah. And there were millions of them produced, I There see. were millions of them produced, but that tends to be the problem. People, as you say, people think, oh, it's Beatles, mm. it's got to be rare, it's got to be worth money. They were, they were probably the best-selling band of the, the 60s, and in those days, singles and albums are selling in the millions now, yeah. as opposed to the tens of thousands now. Mm. So there are huge numbers of copies of these about. So the shops that have got them, possibly in the West End, they do get a bit of a tourist market, they mm. can get 40 or £50 pounds for them, but generally, my feeling is this, this is worth around 20, possibly 25 tops. So right. we'd be looking or offering 10 to 15 pounds maximum for it. I think that's going to be too low for our man. I, do you know what? And also, I think he should have it back. Yeah. For 15 pounds, I think it's better off being in his collection for him to keep thumbing through. I do say that to people on certain occasions themselves, yeah, because this is something that we see quite regularly. Unfortunately, both collections are heading back to Don in Sheffield to decide if he wants to sell privately. Don and Jackie's work has had to take a back seat. Just over seven weeks have passed since they received the heartbreaking news 
that their son Scott, who lived in America, had died suddenly. We've had some tragic news recently, haven't we? Oh, yeah. And um, with the loss of our son. And the focus from when you first started filming has switched to more that we're going to raise money for yeah. his children. He's got three children. His three children uh, who live in Arizona. Um, the, all three of them are young. They're just one Four. of them is just going to start school. And the other need childcare, don't they? Because mum still needs to yeah. work. So the mum's still yeah. working, so it will help pay towards childcare. Part of that fund might be able to help them come over to see us. Yeah, we want them to have a holiday here with us. You know, come and. With the aim of raising as much money as possible for their grandchildren, Don and Jackie are keen to carry on with decluttering. I think it was a little bit, we've started so we'll finish it. Yeah. You know, we don't like to just leave things and not, not, you know, see it through to the end, so we just wanted to do it. And we've got to carry our life on as well, haven't we? Mm. Scott would have wanted um, us to carry on. Everybody wants us to do it and... Yeah. And for our grandchildren, you know, they are yeah. our main focus in our life now. Upstairs, Don makes a start. Nice little children's chair. That can go to charity, that. The messy study has been filling up for over 30 years. Crystal growing kit. Never grown a crystal, never even opened it. That can go. But it doesn't take long before he's making progress. Well done, it's looking a little bit clearer already. Yeah. You're going to feel so good when this is done, aren't you? You'll be able to clean. I know. You'll be able to walk in here. I know. There's Scott's LPs. I think I'd like to sell those. Yeah. Make some money, them Nirvana and stuff like that. Yeah, OK. And under all that clutter, Don discovers an antique. Wow. Look at that. Beauty. Oops. It was. <laughs> oh, yeah, so that's instruction though. still. Wow. Little 1920? Scissors. So it's nearly 100 years old, this. That is amazing. <laughs> Sadly, these sewing machines were mass-produced and built to last. Well, usually. So even in mint condition, they are not of great value, selling for just a few pounds. Hey, I can see a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Look at it, it's looking amazing already. <laughs> Don and Jackie are making great progress in the study, but they still have that jam-packed garage to sort out. Back in Cambridgeshire, Joanna is about to tackle the living room with retired costume designer and avid collector, Michelle. What's in that box? Your guess is as good as mine. We've got little glass ramekins. Will you use them again? Probably not. Into the charity shop bag they go. 1957, that one. Teach yourself judo. Charity. You're on a roll now. We're filling these bags in no time at all. Oh, oh this is a heavy one. It is, isn't it? We'll have my workout done anyway. Joanna's helped Michelle make an excellent start and now feels she's ready to carry on alone. Curtis is out selling again. So I've got Michelle's scent bowls. Now, she doesn't want to part with any of these, but I've picked out just a few, which I think she's happy for me to sell. I promised her a few pounds. I think that's all we're going to get. Well, that very much depends on whether antique dealer Mark likes what's on offer. It's a shame they're not all Victorian, and a shame they're not all period. Um, the reproduction ones, we don't do a great deal with them, but as you've brought them along, I'd be interested in buying all four of them. OK, so let's talk about money. You got any thoughts yourself? I mean, individually, maybe? Individually. I'm going to say those two individually, I'd be looking to pay £10 for the, for the pair on those. OK. they are reproduction. It's the genuine ones that I'm interested mm, in. That's my favourite. That's my favourite as well. Nice etching on it, nice hand-blown piece. Like, late Victorian, possibly Edwardian. Mm. This one, 1920s, maybe 1930s, not as pretty as this one, so that's the one that I really like, but if okay. you're buying a job lot to get it, 
I'd say for all four pieces, 25 quid. That would be my top offer on that. See, Do you know what? I'm not going to fight you on that. I think it's a really good offer. Let's shake hands on 25 pounds. That sounds great. I'm delighted with yeah. that. Back in Sheffield, spurred on by the thought of raising some funds for their grandchildren, Don and Jackie tackle the garage. Right, round two. Done the upstairs, now for the garage. <gasps> Oof. Oh, my goodness. It's going to take a bit longer, this, uh, upstairs. It is, isn't it? No time for chit-chat. Don and Jackie get stuck in. This table can go. Nice bonfire. Spanish flag. Yeah, save that. You oh. definitely need to take that on board. That can go in junk. Hey, we're getting somewhere. Right, that's one bag for the bin. It bogs you down, all this clutter, doesn't it? Yeah. How many times have I used that in the last five years? <laughs> never. And I would say, never. <laughs> it's a thing for picking heavy loads up. You know, if you're loaded, picking something well, big up. What heavy loads do you will... pick up? And I never, <laughs> I've never used it. When we go to Spain, we're in a very basic apartment and we realise how little you, need you can to live. live on. Yeah, it's true. How little cutlery, how little gadgets. All you need is just a simple life. Mm. Well, you've still a bit to do before you get to that stage. Don DJs in his spare time and this extra space in the garage will come in handy for all his gear. The plans are is to have a space right at the front of the garage, basically to have my speakers and some of my DJ equipment at the front. So I just go in, they're on shelves, and I just choose what I want. I want to get back from gigs, back onto drive, unload yeah, my gear. That's a lot better, a lot quicker. It, isn't instead it? of leaving can... it at places where I'm playing yeah, and fetching it next idea. day and stuff like that. And after a few hours dedicated to decluttering, the garage was looking almost ready for Don's DJ decks. The couple have gathered together four bags and some larger items for charity, and they've identified various bits and bobs to sell. Job well done. It's been just over two months since Marianne left Don and Jackie to continue their clear out. Now, Joanna is here to see how they've been getting on. Hi. Don, Jackie. Joanna. <laughs> I'm Joanna. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice Come to in. meet you. Lovely to meet you. Can't wait to see the first room. Come on. Lead the way. <laughs> <laughs> Upstairs, Don and Jackie's study had been more of a storage space for Don's record collection and DJ equipment. But now... All Don's gear has been stored away and the room is now bright and uncluttered. It looks like a lovely spare room. It is now. This is my study, my computer room or where I work. OK. Record room. And the grandchildren stay here when they have a little sleepover. Oh, lovely. It was like an adventure playground for grandkids. <laughs> I'm you know. happy with what I see. I think you've done a grand job. Yeah, and we'll eventually be able to get the wardrobes finished because we've not finished those. We've OK. They've been like that yeah. for ages. What have so... you got to do to finish them, then? Uh, I've just got to put a fascia on the front. Yeah. Um, and a panel down the side here. And, and some inserts, you know, the, what you go inside for all your... OK. Yeah. Guys, this room has come as a lovely surprise to me. The study is looking great, ready to welcome their grandchildren to stay. Out in the garage, there is more to see. It had been full of all sorts of unused items that Don and Jackie had been holding on to, and there was very little floor space. And now... Well, it's looking tidier and a bit more organised, and they've created a clear passageway through so they can access all the shelves. Looks like any ordinary garage to me, if I'm honest. Well, you wouldn't have recognised it, cos it was absolutely floor to ceiling. Bit of work in progress, we've managed to, um, clear a bit we've of space. We've whittled a lot away, we've whittled a lot away. And with all that whittling, they are still unearthing items to sell. Fully operational, built-in single ovens. OK. So. Yeah. They're 300 quid plus to buy. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. You sell it. How much do you want for it? <laughs> I don't know. If we could get £50, that'd be good, but... 30 to 50 I think 30 you'll get £50, 50 pound for that all day long. Understandably, after their tragic loss, 
The garage is a work in progress, but Don and Jackie have made a great effort. Curtis sold Don's turntable and together with some other items they sold online, Don and Jackie have a cash for clutter total of £225 to go towards the fund for their three grandchildren in America. And they are hopeful they will be able to add to that total as they have plans to keep selling. We're very More happy because we've now yeah. got a clear bedroom and yes. a, a nearly clear garage. We've got some so. work in progress yeah. now. So. Yeah, and, and it's, it's given us that encouragement to yeah. do it, carry on with it. Being here today and hearing Don and Jackie's story just emphasises how much hard work the two of them have put into decluttering their home. And that extra cash we've raised, well, that goes into a fund to help their grandchildren. Still to come, left on her own, Michelle is struggling to clear out her clothes. I'm not looking forward to this. I love my clothes. So will she impress Joanna with her decluttering? I've made an effort. In Cambridgeshire, Michelle is partway through tackling her messy home, clearing clothes, ornaments and other odds and ends for selling and for charity and to dump. Collecting things is my comfort zone. So letting go of things is not really that comfortable for me. Curtis has already sold Michelle's antique soda siphon and a selection of her perfume bottles. Now he's in Streatham with retro gaming expert Simon. He's hoping to convert Michelle's son's collection of games and consoles into hard cash. Simon, when I took all this equipment out of the lady's house, oh, right. I did say to her, I know more about potholing than I do about computer games and all the consoles. So I've brought them to you, first of all, to find out what we've got, but secondly, to see if you're interested in buying them. OK. Well, let's have a look, see what you've got. Far away. Uh, what we have here is a collection of Nintendo uh, bits and pieces. OK. From, from the um, mid-80s going through to the late 90s. They all work. They do. So that's good news. Um, let's not talk about individual prices. OK. Let's talk about a full-on once-in-a-lifetime offer price. I'm going to have to be led by you on this. I am in the dark. In fact, I'm at your mercy. OK. Because I know nothing about gaming at all. I think an honest price, taking into consideration that you have got the Zelda yep. and everything's in relatively good condition, I think, um, I can offer you... £120? Well, I'm going to shake your hand on £120. I think that's a great price. I know that the lady who owns this would be delighted with that. I hope so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Games and consoles sold. Simon loved them. 120 quid. I think that's fantastic. And I still don't know much about it. Back in Cambridgeshire, Michelle is ready to declutter her jam-packed home. First up is the bedroom, which is bulging at the seams with clothes and boxes and bags of knick-knacks. Come on, Duke. Let's go and see what we're doing. Where do we start today? He's not going to be able to help. It's a mess. It is. I say we should start with the pile. It's almost as tall as me. Let's get some bags and boxes, Duke. What today means to me is the start of getting rid of all this stuff One box. and being able to walk into a room without climbing over everything. A new start, a life to get on with, instead of just sitting here in all this junk. There we go. Easy does it, you've only just got started. Michelle is soon in the swing of it and making decisions of what to keep and what to clear. This was sold online, so I need to put this in the box and post it off later on. Yellow for charity, red to sell and black for rubbish. Next, the wardrobe, which is jam-packed with clothes seamstress Michelle made herself. I am not looking forward to this. I love my clothes. And a lot of hours went into making a lot of these clothes. She decides that charity shops are the best place for her handicraft. 
Perhaps they'll give somebody else a lot of joy. In the living room, there's a mound more mess to sort through. The iron's over there. I put it down, waiting for it to cool, and then forgot to put it away. That's been there for a month. Striking while the iron is hot, or in this case cold, Michelle wastes no time in cracking on with the clear out. As well as clearing the junk, Michelle is proving to be a wizard at unearthing items that might make her some cash. These are three Harry Potter books that are all first editions. So I think these can go online or, or to a specialist bookshop. After a long day, seven bags went to charity and four boxes of items were taken away to sell. I'm tired, but I'm very pleased that it's been done. And now I can actually see the surfaces, so I know what colour my furniture is. And, of course, poor Duke, he is exhausted and gone to sleep. Over the next few weeks, Michelle continues sorting through her clutter. And she's caught the online auction bug and has been selling her unused pottery and crockery along with other bits and pieces. I have sold 53 lots and I've got another 35 to go. I would expect, with the rest of it, to make at least another £100. Joanna is back in Cambridgeshire to catch up with Michelle. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. I can't wait to see what you're doing. Come on in. Come on, Duke. Her bungalow had been filled to the brim with all her collections. Her bedroom was bursting at the seams with clothes. And now... All the bags and boxes have been removed. Unused clothes have been cleared out, leaving the wardrobe full of clothes Michelle wants to keep. Michelle! I've made an effort. I'm pleased. This is great! It seems like you've addressed the elephant in the room. Yes. Cleaned up. And you've got a nice bedroom. Yes. Michelle's done a great job tidying up, but when it comes to clothes, she has a confession to make. I've bought a few more. Michelle, what have you been buying? <laughs> bought a skirt and two jumpers. Why? It's just that, you know, winter's coming and I needed jumpers. Yeah, but winter's not here just yet. Not far and off. And it, to me, you've got loads of jumpers. There's no jumpers in there. Oh, that's a cardigan. Cardigan. What's that? What, what's a cardigan? It's the same thing as a jumper. Yeah. All right, I'll give you that. Well, listen, I'm happy with what you've done. I will concede defeat on that one. Thank you. <laughs> In the living room, every surface was scattered with ornaments and all sorts of knickknacks. And now things have changed a tiny bit. Well, I've tried. OK. So... There's still a bit of stuff here. That's all been listed online. OK. So, I mean, it's being sold online. Oh, great. And so you're selling? Yes. Brilliant. This cabinet looks a heck of a lot better. You can actually see into it now. Wow. Time now for the cash for clutter total. Curtis sold the antique soda siphon, the retro computer gear, a selection of Michelle's perfume bottles, along with a couple of other items. You've been selling some bits and bobs, yes. and so far you've raised a hundred pound. And with the sale of your items, yes. we've earned two hundred and eleven pound. Wow! So that's a grand total of three hundred and eleven pound. Yes. However, you've got more stuff to, to sell, sell, so who knows what the final total will be? Yeah. Be a multi-millionaire by the end of this. Well, you never know. It would be good. It would be very good indeed. And since then, Michelle has made another £150 selling items online, bringing her cash for clutter to £461. I was very surprised. It's a lot of money. And hopefully I'll be able to pay some bills with it. And have we helped kickstart a clutter-free lifestyle for Michelle? I'll think about it. That I'll promise. She's still got a long way to go in the house. But you know what? I think Michelle's going to do it.